All right, and we are live. We are recording. All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, again, this is Rodin, joined today with our very, very first guest, uh, the Anathema. Uh, he doesn't sleep, apparently. That's why he's here. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for having me yeah yeah anytime i love it man like i actually never thought about uh having like guests in the show because i, I it feels like it eats like man we go on forever you know what i mean it'd be difficult to control i try not to show you down too much i guess uh, no yeah yeah but it's like but yeah, it's really interesting you know like i've always like i think uh there really isn't like the, there's not there aren't a lot of podcasts in general out there or streams that you know that's that have that conversation kind of base. I think the only presentation that I have ever experienced that's like that is uh, like hydrostatic podcast, like in the beginning. And uh, uh, wow. who was that? Like that podcast with like Rafe and all them. Coolest, coolest space nerds. There you go. Coolest space nerds. <laughs> they're, they're literally just like in the dude's like. Like in his basement or something, <laughs> in their attic or something <laughs> like that, right? Just drinking beers and getting wasted. <laughs> I'm hoping the Blue Horseshoe Club picks up on that. That would be uh, would be nice if it actually succeeds and uh, kind of gets, uh, you know, actually survives because it's uh, it's a shame to see people like Eve Prosper who has to have to close shop after so long. Uh, it's been like so much content, but I hope it lasts at least this one. Yeah, thanks, man. We'll see, man. Uh, let's double check our guests here, make sure we got. Sure, we're going through just fine. All right, man. Uh, my kingdom for a bigger screen for more stuff to put <laughs> in for <more> real estate. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, we'll go and get started here. Uh, this is where it gets kind of tricky. All right, so we're gonna go over the first thing uh, as always, guys. So we're gonna do our uh, prediction reviews. I think a lot of these were. This is probably one of the weaker predictions that we've had. I think at least on the buy side, uh, the first one we went over, we went over last week was the Kaldara Navy ballistic control systems. I actually got managed to get some of these on on buy orders. But this sounds like a good idea because it's like a very huge volume and right now it sounds a bit cheaper than usual. Yeah, it's really weird. It's, I mean, uh, um, so right it always now, recovers. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. It always recovers. Sorry. It always recovers. So uh, on screen right now, it's uh, it's still it's still reading below average. Uh, see how where I got it, where I got mine from. I was able to get mine at 87 mil. Mm hmm. That's that's almost like the actual floor. Nah, that's like well, sometimes go lowers, but um, like it's very temporary. But if actually I check buy orders not that long ago, and it seems like um, they actually don't have much support. So it would someone selling fifty of them right now would crash the price even more, like at eighty three, I think. Yeah. Um, it's interesting to see that as well. So putting like a large order at a reasonable price would probably be a good idea now. Yeah, it's a. Uh, like, I buy them like at um, five to ten at a time, uh, and then I, I relist them like in that value. I I, I mm -hmm. tend to hold on to them until I until I, I get all my buys uh, fulfilled, because right now they've been reading below average for the last ten plus days now, mm -hmm. so which is kind of uh, which is kind of strange actually. A lot of the. A lot of the other Kaldari Davy items have actually been doing short spikes because they're still in tier one. <laughs> no, and the LP one. price has is, is been going up a little bit recently, so it's not surprising they would do that. Um, I mean, it's just this one is probably just low end like just a good deal, it seems. And it's yeah. still going to be used. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised it actually even sees that volume. I mean, I imagine at least 25% of that is just a. Wash off. It's just a wash away LP, right? Uh, mm -hmm. For for actual use, eh, I can't remember the last time I actually used these. I think the last time I used this when the Tengus first came out, that was the last time mm -hmm. I used them a while ago. All right, uh, the next. So that's uh, I think that was a pretty good call. We're still on buy territory at least now. Uh, the next one we called out last from last week is the uh, Fed Navy Magstabs. 
I don't know who uses these things. I don't know, I don't know either. Just items. like one of my lower volume trade items, it trades well, but... You're right, it's low. It's super low. It's so easy it's, to catch. It's like one of my items I would... I just add it because I have to I have to park some isk somewhere in some orders, but um, yeah, it's just up. Yeah, if it wasn't for this uh, item's uh, pretty aggressive price correction from about a month ago, I, it, it probably wouldn't even be this volatile. Mm -hmm. yeah, pretty, like, <laughs> it's 90 day high it's, like, it's, it's quite a spike of, kind of what was happening around that time Every, every now and then you see someone trying to manipulate a faction item I don't know exactly why but they seem to do it so it, it happens I mean looking at Riaf right now it sounds like it might be that or very low volume and someone just bought a few of them Yeah. sometimes it happens that the stock runs out and then things happen yeah, like I, I personally never use them. I just, I have no desire mm -hmm. to actually probably even if I had like a really blingy Proteus, like I would. No, come on, man. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't use that stuff. All right, next item uh, we looked at is a uh, faction navy ogres. This trades like clockwork, to be honest. Although, well, not I shouldn't say all. Most of the higher demand uh, faction drones uh, trade. Uh, like clockwork. Yeah, even the geckos have been pretty good to me geckos lately. Been, so. Yeah, okay. well, actually, I'm actually calling out geckos this week. Uh, it's actually it's looking good. I think I lost my I, I posted mine at break even lately because they went down like one million. But it's, for last two months, it's been like clockwork. It's yeah. So when we from last week when uh, it was at buy territory, then it's uh, at sell territory. So it's, as you can see, the pattern is just. Sexy little, just little hills. <laughs> oh, yeah, it looks nice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not much. It's like uh, what, like ten to fifteen percent uh, between buys and lows on average. I think right around there. Should probably more, like two point one to two point seven safely. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Volume. I mean, I mean, it's not bad. I mean, like you know. Uh, it's not nearly as popular as, say, the uh, Imperial Navy Predators. Mm -hmm. Those are like... It's 3 mil, 1,000 units about. So, uh, that's, that's still pretty good. That's 3 and something like that. It's, yeah. it's a good item to trade. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, then we had some Observe here. Observe Organic, Mo organic Motor Applicator. Um, you know what? I've been not I'm not seeing a lot of uh, good signs of the P4s late looking kind of flat do you do P4s at all uh, I do them but I wouldn't recommend I, I would I couldn't recommend like any of them because I I do that purely as an experiment really um, mm -hmm. and I don't I don't have all of the tracking methods to actually predict the price from the components yet? So I I have something I'm working on actually, but um, not knowing that uh, I don't uh, put too much emphasis on those. I seem to, from my experience, I have a little bit more uh, profit from the cheaper P4s than the more expensive mm -hmm. ones. The more expensive ones, like the wet wear mainframes, man, I got burned so hard on those several times, man. Mm -hmm. they, you, they look so good and they, and they just crash and you, you, be, and mm -hmm. you know, you know, people are just making them and they're just, because I, I, I make P0s to P4s and that's mm -hmm. on two characters between high sec and wormhole, that's easily a three plus week evolution to, yep. do, it, to do it cheaply, you know, like trying to go for like, like ISK efficiency. That's... Mm -hmm long time <laughs> yeah like right now i i got out of the you know speaking of p4s i got out of our wormhole in alliance and because it just wasn't sustainable to be living in the wormhole and and almost all of our ops are in empires it's, just, it's mm -hmm. not doable man so it doesn't work forever yeah. yeah yeah it's just it's just not man uh so i have to do the math and see if it's worth it to do p0s to p3s instead I have access to uh one of our corp mates uh Pocos, four drums from Gita. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty, man. Four drums from Gita. That was nice. Yeah. Zero percent. You know, he, had, he had, I think he has like 
0.01% just for the purpose of tracking who's using his, his Poco, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Like, man, I got I, I to I I play the numbers and see if it's worth it. Because uh, I seem to be making slight profit from P0s to P3s before I actually pump them into the into the wormhole uh, factory mm -hmm. planet. Uh, next one we noted was the sterile conduit. And this is actually one I experimented with that did fine. Um, oh, yeah. There seems to be enough people trading it that I didn't have any problems like it's cheap enough. getting big orders through, and it's it's been stable. It's been yeah. all good. It went flat this week though. Like when we called it last week, it, it dipped just below average, but then it looks like it's consolidating, mm -hmm. like right in the middle between its you know top buy and bottom sell. Mm -hmm. Like ugh. silly, <laughs> silly. <laughs> Oh yeah. What's this? Oh, it's like smart is flawed since then. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I never read this. Yeah, I never read this. What's this? Can you gave us a TLDR on this link you get. You gave. Oh, Anathema. Uh, sorry, one second. What? Sure, sure. Uh, can you give uh, us a TLDR sure. on this uh, item you linked here? Uh, did I link it? Which item would that be? You linked uh, Insight by Plex Market is flawed since Citadel's got introduced. That's that's interesting. Oh, I didn't uh, see that one. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is a cool one. It's someone else probably, but yeah, I, I did see it on Reddit. I should read it and I, it's on my read list uh, for later. Oh, it's a cool streamer, of course. Cool is it? Uh, uh, it's a, it's a, yeah. one of the uh, SCC people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool is cool, man. He's been around forever. <laughs> uh, mm. Cool says one of the movers and shakers of Plex Market says there are only few people running the whole market. That's totally believable. Mm -hmm. and I used to, the very, what? <laughs> but the thing is that you, you cannot buy remotely from another citadel to another citadel. Which is like I think one big component of actually owning something like the Ice Studio Citadel or the Pandemic Core Citadel, because then you can buy all of you can buy the volume the volume that they get, which is probably as quite big, but you can also buy it at an advantage because you have zero percent fee and everyone else has zero point one, so you effectively have a big competitive advantage if you're like one of the big players there. Yeah, I mean, do you do you think? I mean, is it, an, is it an illusion to think that even now that the Plex is a lot cheaper, that it still will be mostly controlled by the same large entities, big wallet entities? I don't believe like there's like one big entity to that actually controls it. But what I do believe is that there's some people who have a lot of money, a lot of money is in Plex, and they have those little edges, like being able to buy a 0% in like the big citadels which make it um, a competitive uh, advantage to them and they, they basically use that and they max it out and they trade plex all day probably if you want if they want them but then then we can get into like the people who may be probably stuck about plex before it's split and we can talk about this maybe there's uh, maybe there's a lot of people who are behind that i i couldn't tell exactly how many that's actually a good point. Some people probably like took a break and had a whole lot of whole a whole bunch of plexes, and then hey, they're worth you know dividing. Or even by like buying now. it on purpose uh, because I think people with a lot of liquid would buy it before the splits because then they would speculate it would go higher. So maybe they are also part of the reason plex is more expensive now. Some people say it's because it's more accessible and more useful. Um, there's there's a few theories there, but I couldn't venture that far. I wasn't courageous enough to actually buy them in bulk uh, pre-split because I was thinking that I don't know, like I, I couldn't pull the trigger. I really couldn't. It's, it's, it mm -hmm. costs too much for me in my head. Even though I had the money, like I, it cost too yeah, much. Yeah, but even the return on Plex. I mean, if 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 it goes, it went up maybe. Let's say it went up twenty percent, even though it's probably lower than that. Um, if you trade well with like a small amount of liquidity, you go way above 20% in two weeks. 
you're not gonna gonna take the risk uh, gambling on Plex if you unless you have too much money sitting around. I think. Yeah, I mean, like these days, I mean, we'll, we'll review Plex. Uh, I definitely have that as an observe item for this week. Uh, yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Let's see what we got for. Oh, yeah, let's get there to the end of the list, I guess. Yeah. Um, Astero, Garmer, Stradio. Uh, I can tell you right now that they all actually was were good. <laughs> As soon as we called it from last week, it, it just barely hit slightly above average and it crashed back down the Astero, unfortunately. So Astero's in the buy zone again. So that's good. Mm. Astero's are good. Uh, as long as you expect to sell them. Uh, Do you get a 55? I think you're in good shape. Yes. And the thing is that you could expect them to sell them at least at 59. I don't think you would actually have to sell them any lower than that. And you can just wait for them to sell at 59. Yeah, they so, don't cycle enough through the market like as an actual mm -hmm. use item. So, I mean, then it goes between 60, 59 and sixty three, but you're not gonna sell them more than fifty nine unless something happens. So that's uh, that's plenty good. Yeah. Uh, Garmer, it's still on the buy zone. It's under, uh, still below average. Um, it's been hitting a floor of what's that, like 50, 53, 54. Actually, not bad for Garmer. I mean, it's it's only hit like two, two really good uh, sell opportunities in the last ninety days uh, above sixty. Still good though. Good. Uh, the volume's pretty. Eh. Hmm. I mean, it's but then the margin is good enough to actually uh, to actually flip it and without taking too much risk. Yeah, I mean, uh, even in the war zone, you don't see them. These like when they first came out, everybody was flying Garmers. Mm -hmm. it, it, was, it was Garmers online. It was sick. Mm -hmm. and these days, I mean, I don't know. Like, you don't really even because they're they're not, they're not not really as oppressive as they could be, like back in the day. Uh, there's, uh, well, I mean, to be honest, you know, uh, it's pretty easy to shut down a Garmer by you were. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Like it's really, really easy to shut down a car by you are. Just by. But it's kind of a fun frigate still. As well. It is. It is. For the, for the it's cost, definitely fun. I mean, it's not. Mm. It's not bad. It's not bad. Uh, next item, Stratios. I'd like to think I'm. I'm actually quite familiar with the patterns of the Stratios. Well, as soon as I think that, I get thrown for a loop. <laughs> how much? How much? Uh, uh, would you say you should buy them? Because I'm thinking like, I want to wait for them to go below 195. I think buying them at 195 is even a bit high. Anytime they but, go below 200, I have to start looking at them, like mm. more seriously. As soon as they go below 200, that's my, that's my biggest kind of like like mental note. Like below 200, actually, like no shit. Sit down and review it <laughs> if you see it mm -hmm. below 200. But right now, it's it looks like it's about to 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 cross over uh, the. 50 day moving uh, the 20 day I'm sorry the 20 day moving average uh, to show a, a sell sign but mm -hmm. we'll see I mean uh, nothing crazy on volume uh, hovering at around 200 so yeah but how long is this buy gonna last I mean it lasted this whole week will it actually cross over I don't know it looks like it's petering out though this from this from the data um, I wish there was a way for me to actually review this on, a, on the Prosper charts, but it's too many screens. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, next one is Observing Plex, man. It's, it starts to look good, because it's, uh, it's actually... Uh... So it actually crossed... It finally uh, broke, broke through the... Uh, 20 day moving average so it's it is technically below average but it's below average out of a massive high mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't like even though it's really I mean, it seems average, to, it's still scary uh, man it's still scary it seems to hit like the support but the support is even pretty aggressive going up like that yeah like uh, this whole uh, price movement is it it's like i would i would say it's a it's an almost pure mania going on the way we got here. Unless people were really that much more interested now in skins and 
all those uh, Barbie doll items because Plex got smaller. I mean, I'm not sure you could still buy them with ISK, so it's. Um... I don't, I don't. I think I just see the market begin beginning to be more efficient on that point. But um, aside of that, I I don't see really any big driving force behind it, except so for the fact that a lot of people have bought it and they're losing it slowly, and probably the fact that it's it's still going up. I mean, it's normal. It's going to be going up. There's a bit of inflation going on all the time, and. Yeah, I don't maybe. see it like, like too much down. So do you think this is just uh, this one of those standard responses from being too high, from being overbought? I think so. It's just it's just correcting, and CCP I think also corrected it because they tried to they tried to do this in two steps basically. Um, the first step was to offer the small package as a discount. So they had a 50% discount on the small packages that were about 100 and 240 plex to select people, which is pretty much any, everyone with like an Omega account. So like that. And then they decided to do like the big 15% off on everything. So I suspect CCP kind of has a DI on that. So I don't want to speculate too much, but they, they did try to drive it down a little bit as well. Okay. I mean, you know, they've they've been, and I believe that you know they're they're not one to really manipulate directly manipulate the price. Uh, all they care about is it. They don't care where the price moves. To be honest, is what they've said before. Uh, but what their main concern is the speed at which it moves in one particular direction over another. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense. I mean, do you think it? I mean, I think it's pretty possible for this to to go. So, you know, in the in the three mil mark, I think it's very possible. Oh, I, I have no problems believing that because I mean, I plex nine accounts now, Ooh, damn. Uh, and I see other people plexing accounts. But from the the amount of isk power you can make right now in the game, um, the one point five mil mark is not that huge. If you get your five mission set up, you got to plex in two hours. I mean, that's not just. That's not sustainable, though. Like, um, in, the, in, the, in the like real long run, you know what I mean? I don't know, because not that many people actually bother to do the research to and the, the practice and the setup for L5s, because it's still, it's still really a real hassle. Um, there's no guides, no real public guides to do it. You'd have to actually learn it from other people. And there's actually big, big corporations that do that um, and that pass that knowledge on, but they're really kind of secretive because like, I have trouble actually getting in touch with them. Um, uh, but L5s are really, really difficult to get into. And compared to that, the DSQ make by super riding is, is even lower. So uh, the barrier to super riding is not that high because you just need stuff. You need to actually know how a super works and you need to rat. So the barrier of entry is kind of low, and still then you're going to spend three or four hours to get the plex at 1.5 billion. So it's it's still not that long, I think, for a subscription to a game. Yeah, but for new players transitioning to that kind of subscription model, you know. Well, for new players, it's rough. <laughs> it's yeah. going to be rough. Yeah, it, it is. You have, you have to pay like one account if you start. You just have to pay it and eat it. Yeah, like I've never actually plexed any of my accounts before in the past. Um, it's just, I'd, I'd, I'd rather waste it in the economy. By waste, I mean get it blown up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, That's but for some value. people, like I've known people, like when I was in Brave Newbies for like the short time that I was there, uh, I was, like I felt kind of negative towards the folks who knew to the game and their intent was, I'm going to plex, like fresh, fresh players. I know some people who actually did that and it's like, <laughs> they had it rough. Holy did it shit, best. man! Really, you're you're going into this new game with a, and your major goal <laughs> is to play for free. Are you fucking for real? It's gonna be tough, yeah. Yeah, it's tough. It's but I mean, not everyone has the means to do it, so I guess it's also a good thing that's available. But I think a better objective would be to actually have fun with an alpha account, which I think is totally possible. Oh yeah, you mean you'd, uh, you? Are you? You know, I was I was gonna direct that to low sec, but at the same time, I mean, I think that uh -huh. novelty has died out. 
because uh, the war zone's super quiet. Super quiet. I mean, quiet. I've kind of looked at pancakes, what they do. They like the uh, low sec newbie wing of uh, waffles, and it's kind of small, tight knit. It's fun. Um, it's not that huge, though. I mean, if you want to be like in something huge and reactive, it's going to be in all sec anyway. Um, it's going to be hard. It's going to be car fleet. It's going to be people like that. Yeah, I mean, I've even seen advertisements for uh, for alpha incursions. Mm. Um, um, okay. That'd be fun. Yeah, so I'm, I imagine they'll go for the smaller sites, of course, right? You know. Mm. Um, I'm kind of curious what the actual payout is for those smaller sites. Yeah, but even if you're, I think if you're a self starter, you'd be fine in low sec because I mean you you will have to actually get out of the comfort zone and start doing things, and this, the groups there will allow you to do that. But I think for a lot of people, this needs to be a bit of more for hand holding going on, and hence why no big null entities that are really organized that have a lot of resources are probably more adequate for like a first player. And then maybe moving out to low sec to kind of get the more interesting low gang, uh, low sec uh, small gang part. That would be an interesting progression for newbies, I think. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that I've kind of uh, been concerned, you know, uh, reading the alpha concept was that, uh, of course, I've been proven wrong by Rebra <laughs> on this. <laughs> you can you can use an alpha account to actually trade properly, and that's not an alpha. Oh yeah, yeah, you can to, to you trade can. at a profit. Right. Uh, oh no, I, I did make like over 100 million per hour. Yeah, alpha but, play, but but the one thing that we have over the peer, the the actual alpha is we have all of the knowledge. The yes. knowledge, the knowledge it's, will get, it's get you through. Enormous. Right. I mean, could you? I, I can only imagine how many times an, an actual alpha will get burned in the market because he's an alpha, mm -hmm. right? But then, if if my if everything in Eve was to get burned tomorrow for me, I would still probably just. Have a traded alpha and just have fun with that. <laughs> right. So, a lot of alpha ships because even like a caracal, it costs maybe 30, 35 million to fit, and you just have fun with that, right? And you don't need to farm that much. It's, it would be fun. Yeah. Still. True, true. All right. So we went over our, uh, our buys, our sells. They're actually. Some of the cells that we noted from last week uh, will actually be hitting them up on our predictions for this week. So we'll go over those. Uh, I just want to go over some of my recent transactions. I actually had a good number of plus five implants that got matched from buy orders. Mm -hmm. So now I have these uh, sitting in my cell site. Uh, Neural boost improved. It's really wonky. Ocular filters, which looks bad <laughs> right now. <laughs> like, I might have missed the boat on this one. I mean, it's interesting because impasse kind of, they're supposed to cause the same thing, but they, they never track each other that well. Yeah. It's, it's kind of funny. Like Suppress the processors. I have to wait for this. I just barely got these like yesterday. Like the whole, the whole slew of plus fives. Um, and then they go on this, uh, you know, between 100 to 110 million isk pattern, and that's really that's really what I bank on. Mm -hmm. And in Jita, I also have sitting waiting to be put on site. Oh no, I already did. Just got the Kaldari Navy BCS is <laughs> waiting to be sold. So yeah, so those are my biggest ones. Um, and also, I'm now sitting at uh, about 6.1 bill on sell orders and uh, 1.5 on buys. So there was just been a complete switch on on the weight of my assets, of my sale assets. I'm I'm heavy on sell side now than versus buys. I'm anticipating to be kind of falling in this pattern uh, while while doing this particular style of trading where it's a lot slower. It's like Mm -hmm. You know, like lazy Sunday type trading. <laughs> but then you spend less time. You don't stress too much about it. Oh and, God, uh, no. God! Like I'll be it's honest, more fun. There's no way I could I could accom I could ever accommodate this style while I still had that uh, investment fund. There's no way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely no way. Um, but I like it. Um, is it enough to keep me going? Yeah, it is, because the same character that I use 
uh, the, my, my trader, Robro, uh, I, is actually in the militia, <laughs> in the faction. Oh, yeah, militia. that's true. Then, yeah. So it's soup. It's it's convenient. And it's the same thing. And, it, and, and one of the things I'm kind of like having like first world problems with using my trader in the faction warfare zones, like I'm actually winning 1v1s. Like, why? This is a damn trader. <laughs> Come on. Guys. I mean, I, I, that's totally great for newbies, kids. And you can actually have one v ones that you can win. And it's like, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. As long as that stays in the game. I'm just disappointed. Like, guys, a very low skilled combat pilot should not be winning these one v ones against you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just one of those like. like oh. Oh. Oh, you come from this underestimated Tristan story, right? they're really good. Yeah, That's, I was uh, using uh, Tristan's Assassin. Uh, I, I'm, I'm definitely going full Galante line, at least up to Desi's properly, and then move mm -hmm. on from there. Uh, Kulo's saying uh, LP Mark is wonky. Yeah, it can be. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It is. It's all over the place right now, man. Uh, data course. You know what? I see data course pop up as a high turnover or high oh, value actually... versions every now and again. <laughs> There's a really nice cycle on the data course for the electronic engineering, I think. I did a lot of money off that, um, oh, really? placing big orders. That kind of um, buy buying at 95,000 and selling at 110, I think, something like that. Oh, wow. There. It, like, that's, that's the smallest margin on the data course. After that, it only gets better. Um, that. You just have to have a big enough order to actually. Uh, for it to matter. <laughs> absorb absorb everything that someone might have accumulated over the whole year because that's usually what happens. Because oh. people will let those research sit for like any amount of time. You know, that could I be have, one year. I haven't I haven't uh, gotten any of my research agent stuff for like three years. I'm probably sitting that, I mean that's probably the point, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if you I just let let a big order sit, it's gonna feel. Yeah, uh, Moongoo stuff, I'm just not knowledgeable enough about Nosek, uh kind of spheres of influence as far as, you know, to relate that to the space, to the moon type, to the ability to get its empire. I imagine these days a lot of the Moongoo stuff gets processed in-house and gets built into final products in-house. Or, is that, or yeah. is, that, um, is that incorrect, you think? It depends what you talk about because... It's a lot more difficult to do that with Moongoo, PI, and stuff like that than it is for just raw minerals. I mean, raw minerals, you can just process them and chew out supers, and that's easy peasy. But to do that with PI requires a bit more organization. I think people are starting to do more and more reactions. People are starting to get to know about this and actually exporting like actual finite components. I mean, I mean, like end of the line components, basically out of NoSeg or out of wherever they stage, because that's a bit more profitable. Um, I'm not sure there's a lot of people who actually attempt to bridge the gap and actually go all the way to manufacture T2 ships in NoSeg go up and sell locally. Really? I mean, the T1 I can see, at least I like mean, components. You would do T2 ships in NoSeg, but you wouldn't like necessarily need to actually buy the components locally and sell them locally because the margin is so high and the components aren't that big in terms of volume so the cost of logistics isn't that high in that case yeah so like, just working from jita is fine i think in that case yeah i mean that's always been the dream though isn't it i mean to be able to basically build your own ammo build your build build everything right um I'm not sure if we, if we actually do even get there from an economic sense. Like it, it becomes an, uh, economically viable to produce everything. Um, will that actually even stagnate conflicts more to be able to do that all in house? You know, what I mean? because then you become really sustainable in kind of like in, in, in a castle siege sort of way. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was interesting to see. I think the only example where that actually happened is when Burnjita was happening, because mm, then yeah. that then it was very interesting to actually get stuff in and out of Jita, and whomever wasn't prepared with enough stuff uh, in their anger was uh, really really having trouble doing the PvP. 
So we started blending each other's shapes a lot and that kind of stuff because everyone in the alliance is supposed to have like most of the ships at least. So that worked out for us. But that's because we have a real good policy about your hangar because your hangar has to be full all the time. But in the alliances where that's not the case, how do you actually make sure your members have ships? Because once the contracts run out, if burn GTA is happening, there's nothing more coming up, right? You can't just go in GTA and get more. It's it's done. I <laughs> <laughs> lose his shit. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. That's true. All right. Um, so I did that. Um, wormhole evac. Um, so we did uh, the Blue Horseshoe Club podcast episode three this Saturday. Unfortunately, the recording got wonk. Got it, it. It didn't happen. So that sucks. Uh, so I, you know, for. It was, it was a perfect storm, as Caleb had put it. But I do want to go over some of the items that were discussed. I think there's value in actually reiterating some of these items. Uh, one of the things uh, we talked about was uh, this is going to be the first AT season without gambling. Personally, I'm going to be even less interested because there's no gambling. That's just me. Uh, but lawyers are not funny, so it's like, you, you can't really stop them from doing the job. They're lawyers, but... Is this the yeah, shame? It's not there. It's not enough fun. Do you think that will affect uh, viewership in general since gambling won't be allowed at the at the <laughs> legal scale that it used to be? I mean, mm, I mean personally, I I don't need to gamble to actually watch it. I don't want to watch it because I want to see the meet. I want to see what people come up with. But um. The discussion last year when I checked around ours, you know, that was a lot about gambling and all about that kind of stuff. So it's still a transition. Maybe people are gonna bet with each other. Um, sure, like what, like a person-to-person bet. Yeah, that's 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 gonna happen a lot, of course. I mean, I've seen, I, I've done like side bets with people with one-on-one for random stuff, like whoever comes up with hundred billion first or whatever that is <laughs> in yeah, trading. Yeah. I mean, that kind of stuff. So obviously, it's gonna happen. Um, but uh yeah it's a tough question really i mean it's not gonna make it better obviously Um, yeah yeah and that's the kind of the shitty part right i mean um i wonder oh your camera's kind of fuzzy oh yeah it's the the focus is bad sometimes i mean uh, Um, i I wonder if uh does the at actually work as a how well of a promotion tool does that actually work for even you know for eve the game you know if at all i mean i don't know if it does you know during that time period that's a good question actually i'm trying to figure, figure, you know, i mean i would think that you know some people would get you know super interested of course it doesn't <laughs> because it's i guess so because it's not like any other it's not like the other esports right where it's like oh i can kind of get what's happening right or yeah. you know i can kind of understand it. oh it looks that you know that looks cool they're in a the lane this guy is killing this guy it's not really like that in in the at right it's it's fucking bars moving and the thing is that you can't you can't do your own AT your own AT between your friends or whatever. It's not you, you don't play the same thing as the people in the AT do. If Eve Online made an arena with like ten v ten, I think that would really make the AT interesting because people who watch the meta, people who try to do the same thing, people would try and people would really identify with the tournament, but if you're not a tournament player and you watch a tournament, I mean, it's fun, but you don't identify with it like you would before the games, right? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, I, I, I'm sure it's not going to die, you know, but it's just, I think there's going to be generally lower viewership because you have the, you know, dirty casuals like myself that I just go in there to bet. <laughs> The next item we went over from uh, uh, we discussed uh, resource scarcity and uh, the work call and uh, anomaly nerfs. Um, I'm not a work call pilot. Never have never have been in the current state of the of the work call within the last twelve months. Mm-hmm. Um, how hard is the work call nerf that's coming? Um, it's like a ten percent at least ten percent might. Uh, uh, the reduction all around, stats-wise. 
Yeah, it doesn't even matter anymore. I think people are just going to gravitate towards whatever is the best, uh, the best AFK, AFK source of income. <laughs> it's, it's just, like, it's just how it is. Yeah, I just like I'm, I'm, I'm a bit uh, like it doesn't make sense to me from you know from uh, from the point of view of a player that wants to experience good design. It doesn't make sense to me that they turned a raw quality liner. It just doesn't. Yeah. It just doesn't. I mean, it was fun when you actually had to use it as boost and make fleets and have different characters doing different things, but... Yeah, we'll see. I, mean, uh... I, I don't mind having, like, a capital mining ship or having the rock wall even being it, but this the fact that this mining is still an FK operation and it's still gonna attract people multiboxing and people just doing that a lot of the day and not doing much else or actually doing a lot of other things on the side while it's mining and um, the worry is more about the mineral prices for me rather than the actual roll or the actual mining yeah i mean because i mean it does change the game right at the yeah. end i mean all these uh balancing points and you know kind of tweaks they're doing i imagine it's actually not so much from the ore mining perspective i'm thinking this is in preparation for the moon mining Operations that the work mm. that they anticipate the work calls to be a big part of. Again, no, not not a whole lot of news on that front, right? As far as the the actual moon mining slash refinery uh, piece, uh, but I'm imagining if I'm an entity in Nalsec and you're telling me I have to now actively mine moon goo, I'm bringing the best possible solution, which is going to be a work call fleet. Mm -hmm. Plus, you have the jump fatigue reduction, which means you can just uh, get your timers right, the jump a fit of oracles, or like a few oracles probably, and just do them all at the, just one after the other. Yeah, yeah. I'm, you I'm can not, just jump. That's probably why. I mean, it may suck for ore based oracle operations right now, but I imagine this is, for the, I'm hoping it's for the better good, you know, mm -hmm. you know, a bit down the line. How cool says, how are people not surprised that CCP is nerfing Rogue to the ground? I, cool, I don't know. I don't know, because they came out too strong. They came out way mm. too strong, way too but strong. But CCP admitted it, admitted it that they would put out stuff that's way too strong and then nerf it. I mean, this like, I, I find that to be kind of a lame excuse, but apparently that's how they want to do it. I mean, now. How, how would we feel if it was the other way around? If it was just incremental buffs versus incremental... It would be a lot better, I think, because then you wouldn't have, like, I mean, the meta wouldn't change, would change much slower, which makes the game a little bit less interesting for us traders and stuff like that. But it would, it wouldn't like change the meta and then crush it again, which I think is even more deceptive. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's true. That's true. It's like a, it's kind of like a speed pool effect, right? Mm -hmm. Sort of, kind of. <laughs> and with injectors, actually, I think Rathalkin did a lot of uh, oh, failing. Oh man, dude! Don't, don't give me some of <laughs> dude, like, but uh, I think I think he's not wrong on that point because the thing is that if you inject your call and you use injectors to do it, CCP gets the money from it because extractors are actual real money, right? Extractors. Yes. Uh, like extractors. So. Yeah, extract, extract. I mean, it's like yeah, it's. The only so real technically money CCP gets money out of, right? the only legit of doing that, right? Yeah. Yeah, you know what? We had several operators, uh, you know, before you joined our Discord that I think there was two or three that legit injected their way to run calls mm. before, most of them before the first nerf. And man, as, as these nerfs are like right now, we have, I don't think we have a single work wall operator right now. They all mm. switched over to buyback operations and super carry erratic operations and incursion operations. So from yeah. in from an investment invest you know from an investor standpoint, uh, a lot of our you know guys who want to do the effort don't bother with work calls anymore. I mean the return on investment is pretty low because you have to to do a lot of hours on the work call to actually pay it back, but. On the other hand, it's also difficult to lose it. So it's if you earn it yourself with your own money, it's, it kind of makes sense. But to actually pay interest over it is is it's a bit tough. more difficult. It's a bit, uh, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a tough deal. I mean, and uh, I've supported, I think, two of those work call operators. Um, they made back their their promised uh, interest. So 
mm-hmm. but they were they were man they were they were working like like dogs man like super long hours like four hours a night just nah, that's working, horrible. working straight working man crazy we'll see hopefully it balances out to a, to a place where it's enjoyable for more people or most people rather <laughs> um yeah, what else? Oh, uh, the dang, uh, so T, oh, uh, what else can we talk about? Steel extracting, yep. The BR, uh, the Blood Raider Sotillo actually dropped something. <laughs> the Moloch. And person. it didn't get killed this time. It didn't get killed this time. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. I think there was a bit of, uh, hey, did it drop something? Did you get it? No. Did you get it? No. Who got it? Oh, this dude. That's not in the group at all. <laughs> <laughs> and it's gone. So, how do you feel about, you know, having to organize an event? Mm. It takes a lot of potential man hours, you know, from some, from start to all the way through the different cycles of it finishing. Not getting directly rewarded. How, is that is that fair gameplay? Is that is that EVE? <laughs> That's three things. Whenever you're gonna have an event that's that can be running a hundred uh, interceptors, there's not gonna be there's not gonna be any good fights. There's not gonna be anything interesting. So that's like the first issue. I right off the bat before um, <laughs> before it even before we even talk about the loot because a hundred interceptors, you're not gonna kill them. They're just gonna run away and they're gonna come back and they're gonna finish it. It's like this this doesn't make a lot of sense. But even then, if if you had a, an actual fleet of actual uh, interesting and combat fitted ships to get the BR and then someone with interceptor could do it it will also be a problem um, I mean they, they knew they knew they should do that for like station eggs before they knew they should do that for for desires for they knew they should make it them big enough not not only because it makes sense because they're big but also because you have to actually not use like a cheap, um, a cheap ship to actually deploy it. You have to actually put and put a big ship out and have control over the space to anchor it. So yeah, they they probably forgot about it uh, for uh, the blood reader audio, and I'm glad they actually tried to fix it now. I guess. With twenty, uh, they like twenty thousand cube meters now. So that should, should be a good chance. Now, what do you, how do you feel about that comment that uh, uh, Mins made over uh, the meta show, saying, "Hey, we may have to, uh, we may have to not do these events because it's broken, or even prevent people from doing them because it's broken." I mean, it's the Mikta gaming you expect from me, right? But. I mean, it's, it's still gonna be like a hundred frigates or two hundred frigates. I mean, should, it's should, gonna be a little bit difficult to try. I I don't know because the thing is that he, I I don't even like the fact that it's only like in in a small region compared yeah. to the whole of Nolsec, right? Yeah. Because already that's a problem because only certain people or certain really committed groups will run it, and it's already near another sovereign region of Nolsec. So like basically. Uh, not to go into into my whole tinfoil ad mode. Um, it's near to goons. Goons are favored with that. And basically, what CB should have done is actually spawn the somewhere else because that's completely ridiculous. I mean, you have you have sub systems, and it's like you're gonna spawn like a, a huge treasure chest like near one of them, arbitrarily, and you're gonna hope that it goes well. And <laughs> I found that to be a problem as well uh, to engage like more people in it. Because Goons can do whatever they want now, because they're, they're not going to move very far from Delph, but since the, the soldiers are near Delph, they can stop anyone they want from doing it. I am not blaming Goons, by the way. Someone saying in the chat, I'm not blaming Goons, I'm blaming CCP, but... <laughs> I think I think Goons are doing well on the meta game side. If they were trying to stop people from doing it, I actually appreciate a bit of meta game stuff. But placing it at only one place where only one entity can affect the whole thing, 
it's <laughs> it, it's a little bit ridiculous because then if you place them all over the place, then it's fine because like it's gonna get different fights out, different people out, and different entities will get the chance to actually get the the blueprint. But if everyone suddenly has to be like next two guns to actually compete, it's it's gonna be really weird. Um, yeah, I suppose. I mean, it's just really weird that, uh, you know, they go through all that and then this is going to be boycotted. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not for too long. Yeah. Uh, we'll yeah. see. Let me, uh, I think I, something had happened to my thing real quick. I'm going to sneak behind my tower real quick. My other monitor just died on me. One second. <laughs> oh, all right. All right. <laughs> Especially like someone's actually saying that, um, that because someone announced a strong blast change, uh, goods would run it, and I am not convinced. I'm, I'm not even convinced that their threat was like completely uh, valid. Because I mean, they could have just have set up in jest and just uh, I don't know because they're goods, they would have they would have totally set that in jest. Uh, if like I give it, I don't give it like too much credence that they would bike on it. But I would like to see actually some some interesting action going on rather than just hundred figures uh, on the. Uh... Well, actually, we have the link now. Yeah, uh, we have the strong bus link. That's yeah. been published and ready. Yeah, we'll see. Hopefully, uh, they address it, and hopefully, the solutions they come up with are fair for all parties. I mean, I just like personally, I don't think it's fair that. You do all that work, and there isn't a secure way to reward you. Mm -hmm. Like that—that's the part I kind of have a problem with, uh, because it's—it become you put yourself in a position where it becomes too easy to say, you know what, fuck this shit, I'm doing something else. I mean, I would be fine with something like, uh, like in other places, you would have an acceleration gate. Yeah. That would that would throw you like very far from the objective, so you could actually control it if you're good at it, and that would be actually fun, for example. As an alternative, but then of course you get the problem that it doesn't fit the lore and it's like not really logical. So you would have to do something different. But actually having everyone's opponent with the same point that's really so dear, for example, would be interesting because they can actually fight your way to the sodio yeah. and kind of control the grid before even you get you get to that point where you have to do it. And we'll see, man. We'll see how it goes. Uh, just want to do a quick investment group update. We had one operation that actually completely finished. Uh, it is a it, well, it was a super carrier riding operator. Um, so this would be our third, if not fourth, super carrier operator. <laughs> oh, fourth actually, because that's interesting. I didn't think it would take off at first. I mean, even though the guy seems to have and knows what he's doing, he's still a super carrier and he can still lose it, right? Yeah, it's yeah. it's kind of scary. I mean, uh, these are the same guys. A lot of our op, uh, a lot of our super carrier operators actually do the super carrier thing on the side. Uh, mm. They usually have. I guess I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's all of them. Um, they do buybacks plus super carrier. So that would make sense. Yeah, they make more money actually from the buybacks than the super carrier. <laughs> Um, uh, but yeah, so I had, um, uh, my share of the investment to the guy or gal, I shall never talk to him or her, so I'm not sure if it's a male or female. <laughs> um, I gave 1 billion ISK and I got back, uh, 10% in interest over a course of, uh, I think two months. So I got That's back 1.1. Yeah. I mean, for a billion that I wasn't doing anything with anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right now we have uh, uh, just a few pending operations left. A lot of them are not really pending. Pending is the wrong word because they're going to be continuous. A lot of they're ongoing. Uh, yeah, this, yeah, they're not going to stop. Uh, like the buybacks are going to stop probably. So it's good to have cash on hand when you do a buyback. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean the buybacks. I mean the and one thing too uh, from our other uh, operator, another another operator altogether. Mm -hmm. um, 
yeah, he was just, you know, kind of just expressing uh, like positive comments over being part of the group and having an opportunity to actually get the money to do the stuff that he was able to do, you know, the buy mm -hmm. the uh, buyback stuff and the uh, uh, super carrier stuff. Um, from your experience, kind of like what we're doing here, like we're talking about e markets for fuck's sake. Mm -hmm. you know, like, yeah. <laughs> I, I have, you know, as far as the graphics are concerned, we have not yet undocked. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, is, you know, uh, and, and using this as kind of, uh, you know, a great social platform, right? And stuff like that. I mean, should this be I'm, I'm surprised a lot more a lot that a lot of people actually don't experience this type of gameplay that we do and we kind of take for granted i think you know how the experiences that, that we have it's very difficult to get other people to actually first believe in the gameplay we're actually engaged in because it's like a private group but yeah, it's but so different from the though, philosophy right? other people it's have quite public I mean, it's, it's it's not entirely public. You still have to kind of know it exists, but everyone can get in, of course. Um, but when people talk about uncollateralized deals, it's it always get very very uh, people get very nervous about it very fast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, like it's, it's uh, Eve. You know, we both have uh, handled other people's money. Mm -hmm. Right, <laughs> I think uh, you you were definitely handling way more than I ever did, uh, but the you know the the selling points, the trust, right, you know, and being part of a a, a, a community member in good standing allows you to kind of mm -hmm. do these activities. But now I can say I have I have actually been offered more money than I could handle because that's actually like the tipping point where okay this is getting kind of weird because I, I can't even accept all the money that's been offered because well it's. Uh, 150 billion that was for a month about about that and then i got offered 100 more on the side which i couldn't wow. take because i mean i couldn't i could barely run like 150 uh, alone okay. with oh, 20 okay. hours a week i thought you had i thought you were handling more oh no no the, the 150 was it basically um oh, okay. i had a collateralized loan which brought it to 250 total liquidities being traded and I could have gone to five hundred, I think, but I wouldn't have enough. Uh, wouldn't have enough items to trade. Wouldn't have enough experience in some things. Um, but then you get to an interesting point because either you find another niche which is that's profitable, or you try to optimize what you do, like Probac did with PI and stuff like that. That's sick. And I'm I'm kind of edging like between the two. I have to I have to find out what what would work. Yeah. But if I can program something that automates like the painful parts of my process, I could probably optimize it to to double it or something like that. But and do spend the same amount of time. Well, there's only so much you can legally automate, uh, automate, right? That's and... also a problem. I don't want to get into any trouble with you if I have other people's money in the pocket because that's that's getting real, real iffy. If you get banned and you have other people's money, like ISK in your <laughs> account, it's I just don't want to think about it too much because that would be really painful. Yeah, I mean, uh, like and that's why I trade the way I do, like super slow, and it's just just, and mm -hmm. just sniping. That's really all I've been doing, man. <laughs> that's all I've been doing. Because technically, you could do something like um, uh, what's it called, the program? Let me see. Or oh, Avernus, yes. What Avernus does with auto price copy. You could, I could optimize the same thing, do it, program it for myself, and have basically cut down my update time in by half. But it's getting to the point if, like, if you pull from the API and you automate all of the decision process of which items to buy and how big to put them and what price to put them, but you just copy paste the numbers and press enter, is that really? any good and even if you do it too fast then ccp bans you anyway because you do it too fast right that's what happens to some i think i heard from someone who actually didn't bot but typed way too fast and just got banned for a little bit before getting unbanned um I prove that he was typing <laughs> i don't know he didn't have to prove it but it was temporary so he just yeah it's 
weird. But when, when you go to France, there's definitely raising like probably some far flag uh, with CCP and just uh, probably bans you temporarily yeah. before they look at it. I mean, uh, the market stuff, I mean, that's, I think that's one of the few places in the game that you can really only bot your way to success so far until you get spotted like hard and you get banned, right? And then it's like big time because if you're doing it in the markets and if you have a bot that works, you can just let it run and just drag in a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in a way that kind of creates kind of like a, a you know, a, some sort of barrier, right? Some defensive barrier in the, for the whole process, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. All right, so yeah, I'm, just, I'm glad that we're uh, the investment group is actually doing better. Uh, I think we're easily almost three months scam free. <laughs> I should have like a little. Oh, three months. Three, three, how much is the last incident? Then I should have like a. Dude, you know... dude the last incident wiped out a lot of people. I felt, I felt so bad. It's like how big was it, by the way? Uh, Feel nice saying, of course. But... I think in total, because he got like uh, almost all of us, like sixty bill, I think. Oh jeez, that's hard. Right. He got us. He got us hard. That is quite hard. Definitely about sixty bill. Yep. So we kind of like you know uh, dust each other off and. All right. Let's. Uh, if anyone wanted, wants to continue, you're more than welcome to. And uh, mm -hmm. the one thing, the our our my or my reaction rather as far as a process was to keep better track of who's dealing with what, so that mm -hmm. you know I can kind of help build your positive reputation mm -hmm. you know so in that sense it is it, it does become more di it, it it's made it more difficult to actually break into the group even even within our own circle because mm -hmm. we've had the same operators forever and they're just expanding their own operations to accommodate more money that's all they've been doing so yeah as long as there's money to be to be uh, opportunities to be uh, to be invested in it, so it's gonna be easy for new ones especially with clips fund which is like gonna sunk it's already sunk 500 billions. I mean, I, I even have trouble imagining that, but... I'm not sure how he does it. It's, uh, it's quite something, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, with Caleb, I'm, I'm, I'll be honest, like, I, I don't understand the process. I guess that's my, that's my biggest, like, like, fault in the whole thing. Like, I don't, like, Caleb, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> I don't know what you do. <laughs> You're making money, but like, I, don't, I don't know how you're doing it. <laughs> I mean, I can understand a few things, but it seems like either he's secretive about it or either it's it, it changes depending on the time. But it seems to me like he identifies some opportunities in the market, just feels them, and it's like he seems pretty fair, like, flexible about it, actually. Yeah. So I'd be curious to see more of what he does, but then he probably won't tell too much either. Who says one of these days we should ask him to explain the process on Blue Shift. Yeah, that would really be good, because that's uh like he he yep. he plays or experiences Eve at this level, and I'm we're like down here, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm 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 super simple when it came to my financial dealings. It's just I buy low, sell high, <laughs> and people give me money. I, I never traded with my own money ever. This is the first time I'm trading with my own money. So when I was doing oh, really, that's yeah. like that's a good chance, yeah. Yeah, it is like the, So this is like it's it's kind of weird. So the I I was experiencing the high risk part of trading with other people's <sighs> assets first before I actually. Did. Man, now you're tempting me to actually dump all my money into an apostle and the Knicks and um, and trade with other people's money. You know what I'm gonna do? <laughs> You know, and I, I make more it's money off of, off of my investments with other people than I do my own trading. Mm. Way more. Way more. Well, it's a lot more engaging and motivating, I guess, as well. Yeah, and it's. In, I feel like I'm, it's, it's, a, it's a more fundamental, positive contribution to the community, right? Mm. When, when you're directly funding someone's, someone's eve time, effectively, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Exactly. Yeah. See, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm not sure how to actually grow the operation at this point. I don't know where it could really be, uh, especially when we're talking about um, the mechanics that are available to be used in game when it comes to dealing in assets. I think that that's one of the. 
that's one of the things that I feel is going to be a really hard barrier to actually overcome. Um, especially when you're dealing with players that are not in the same alliance, not in the same corp, but exchanging I know, assets. Yeah. You know, but it's almost as if you, you, it's better to not be integrated into the same in-game organization, just for your own safety. <laughs> yeah. well, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, is that something that CCP should be aware of, you know, to, to, to look into if there's value in actually doing that? I don't know. Does it, does, it make, does it make sense to improve the social market meta? It would. I mean, it's really, it's really what makes even what it is, but is it that important that CCP would spend time to do it? I think that's the main question. Yeah. And do what are the easy wins we can do? Because right now, what I can see as easy wins is basically make the whole market uh, window better. That's like number one on my list is just make it better. Um, allow us to collapse things we don't need. Uh, have the data actually um, better sorted out, better APIs. That will already like make things a lot more comfortable. And that's an easy win. But then if you talk about like facilitating transactions, facilitating loans, that's that's things that are really interesting, but that are really difficult to solve as well. So Yeah, yeah. I mean like right now, you know, the folks at home looking at our uh the stream here, this is not even as many windows as you would have open when you have a a, mm -hmm. a real trader working. You know, what I mean? there's three screens, two windows on a screen, orders and markets, basically. Yeah, man, it's crazy. It's, it's how crazy. it works. It's the, to, 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 to make it fit on the same window. It's just super I want to spawn, <laughs> spawn two more else, but I don't have five screens, so it's I'm a bit screwed right now. Yeah, like we we. We're gonna have to expand. We we run the realm of. Uh, <laughs> Same hardware requirements as real life traders. <laughs> what the fuck? Exactly. Hey, why? Why is it like this? <laughs> mm -hmm. It's crazy, man. Oh, quick bars. Yes, quick bars. Please, please, please. I want. Yeah. I want to be able to transfer my quick bar to other accounts oh, because I have. Yeah. I have a quick bar with exactly three thousand six hundred items. Good lord! Wow. They all sorted like everything I wanted, but. It's only on one account because I cannot transfer it yep, for life with it. me. You know what? It's, it's so, stuff like that. It's horrible. It's stuff like that that uh, made me consolidate all of my trading assets and time to just one character. Mm. It's, it's stuff like that. It's not, it's not transferable. It's... So I just have to have this character open all the time so I can check the quick buy while I'm actually selling with another character on another window. That sounds and so cool. Managing my stock is... <laughs> That's that's really annoying, I think. Yeah. And that's something I can you can actually program something to uh, manage that because the uh, the API allows you to actually open up a set item, a chosen item in the market window on one character. So you could have like a virtual quick bar that you can program and then it pops up the right item on the character you want. Which is like part of what I want to optimize while I'm not running my fund right now uh, for like the next round. So I can actually not have to deal with the quick bar. Uh, and I have something even better. Yeah. It's 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 a complicated solution and I wish it was simpler, but you have to be a programmer pretty much now. <laughs> it's it's that ridiculous. Is it, would it be just a other game tool? Hmm. Well, I mean, yeah, it would be an game too, but that is extremely quick buy, basically. Hmm. Maybe dynamic because it could it could change over time depending on what the conditions are in the market. But it would be a lot oh, of okay. lot of game quick buy, right? Because then you can you could have like a window open in your web browser. You could click one item and you would have it pop up on your Eve clients, right? That you can do with the API as it is now. So. You could have like a very interesting quick buy that opens up on the right character for you to set up a buy order and then check out your sell order on the other character if you want. I mean, it's you could do stuff like that. So that's actually a really good point that you just brought up. I think uh, 
is the stuff that we need to improve our social market meta play just having more access to the back end of the game to make our own tools? I mean, we already have that access, as I, as I mentioned right now. But the thing is, is that it it's... Though? Is it enough? I don't know. Um, I mean, can you do more before it gets into botting territory? I don't know. I mean, in terms of functionality, I don't know. It's uh, what would be nice is actually an instant uh, a way to instantly update the orders you have without any cash, because you can, because then your program would have the same view on your orders as you have, and. Um, Similarly for the market orders, I mean, if, if your program had access to the same exact same orders as you are seeing on your client, that would also be good. But those are very minor points, I think, compared to the fact that there's no out of game tool that does that kind of thing yet. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, uh, like me personally, what I would like to see from the style of trading that I do, uh, just have more options for technical analysis. That's really all I want. Oh yeah, oh, yeah that's, that would be really cool. More just have percentiles and things like that. It's... Even if it's just being able to adjust the 5-day moving average and 20-day moving average, that's all I want. Should we talk about the fact that the median is actually the average? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the median is the average. <laughs> yeah, it's like... I... like... There's a Donchin channel. Why hmm. is there a Donchin channel? Like, that's that's... It's casting <laughs> chicken bones, man. Dodging challenge casting chicken bones. I would be more happy with just being able to, in game, be able to draw lines. If I could, mm -hmm. in game, be able to draw lines. Oh, on that, actually, I think you can do that with out of game tools as well. You can, you can have that kind of stuff. I think. But then like, you couldn't uh, see like where the lines end. Basically, you couldn't see like where in the graph, like precisely what's the amount it should be at what point, but. Yeah, that's really like that's my biggest thing. Like, I, I try, I tried to just like copying the uh, OHLC charts from Prosper and putting it into paint. But and that can lines. also be out of game, I think, because I mean, you can you can have the same data out of game. You just have to put it in the software that actually does it right. Yeah, that's my biggest. Thing. Yeah, just more team. It's more technical analysis tools. That'd be great. Uh, being able to adjust the moving averages because like a five day and twenty day like doesn't work with Plex. A mm -hmm. five day and twenty day doesn't really work well with really low volume items, but high value like faction ships. But I'm actually curious to see what kind of demand there might be for out of game tools like that because, for me to, I mean, I, I will do it for myself because I like to do it. But for me to go from the the fact that I did it for myself to actually publish it and maintain it um, is kind of a step up, and at that point, it's like. Is there actually enough people trading at a level that actually needs that uh, that kind of tool to sustain that? I don't know. Um, but I'm curious to find out, really, because I'm starting to do some custom development and kind of checking out what some people have in the investment channel. Like some people have some programs that I'm kind of having a look at, and I'm kind of trying to see if I can actually do something that might be interesting for those people. But the, the price would have like to be something ridiculous like 500 plex per month. Oh wow. <laughs> to actually, I mean, so like it, it kind of weighs out like, because there's going to be so few people that actually need something advanced like that. It's going to have to be like on par with the kind of money you make trading big time, I think. Yeah. I mean, I guess I'm kind of at the other side of the, of that spectrum. Like, like the tools that I would need super simple. Uh, but I've seen some of the tools and kind of methodologies that some of our fellow traders do. It's like, it's fucking out there, man. It's, mm -hmm. it's deep. You know what I mean? Yeah, it is, it is. Like, like real life trading stuff. Like they, they're probably, they probably, some of them probably are real life traders. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that wouldn't surprise me as well. There was like a real life um, analyst that actually spent a lot of time on the forums explaining basics a uh, long time ago. I guess for me, my saving grace is I'm like pretty simple in TA. It's literally just like, you know, I work in moving averages and just like, mm -hmm. like Japanese candlestick type of stuff. You know what I mean? Like actual day-to-day -day patterns. Yeah. 
by a lot still. I mean, it, it doesn't fail. It's <laughs> it, it totally works. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. Let's see what's next here. Oh, uh, the next items we got is the um, the current for this week. The buys and sells. So we'll go over those. We talked about Plex. So. Um, observe excavator mining drones and mining drone mats. They're dropping in price. I made that note last night and I checked again today and they actually still are dropping in price. Or maintaining a low price, rather. Mm -hmm. But this seems to be a panic sell, but like, I think I've been on the wrong side of a panic sell like early on. Like, the last nerf was pretty bad for me, but I might have done it wrong because I had 75 drones. 75 right which I, I had 75 at last nerf which i had to get rid of um and i decided to sell at a reasonable price but before it went back up to 1 billion oh wow so i would i would say maybe if if you want to get in on it i would probably buy like now after two three days the price is probably as low as it's gonna get because yeah. people people who have buyers are gonna dump them and oh, then it's possible. then it's probably gonna recover or stay the same yeah. um considering like the current the current fine diamond price um and if i just look at the graph now it's, it sounds like the, the the shift in volume has already already passed um so should be fine to actually get some right now yeah um the drone street broke fragments is probably one of the few mats that are actually increasing in value but it's probably, that's probably outlier, kind of outlier zone mm -hmm. right there. I imagine it's going to consolidate. Uh, coronary units, as soon as that news came, it just dropped. <laughs> <laughs> Drone epidermal shielding, as soon as that news came, dropped. Oh yeah, there you go. Drone tactical limb similar behavior it's it's in volume too that it dropped which is very telling uh cool is asking for playing the t3 market i the extent of my play on tech 3 market is i i try to capture the melted nano ribbons on peaks and valleys that's really it that's really mm. it i used to buy t3 ships and t3 days and all that kind of stuff all the t3 stuff on buy orders and I did end up buying a few of them. I mean, enough for them to justify actually setting up the orders and selling them at a profit, except for when uh, when someone started to flood the Tango market with tax of about uh, five to ten days worth. Yeah, it's fucking pro bad, it, it? That was that was absolutely insane. So at that point, I kind of I kind of stopped, or I actually only bought them when they were really really low, um, which kind of slowed me down on that market. Uh, I didn't get burned, I would say. I just got like a, a few hundred mil loss on one transaction while I won a few hundred on the other. So it's like, it's fine. But I did slow down because I cannot justify putting up my orders as high as they would have to be to actually hit. I can't justify putting them that, that high if ProBag or anyone else is going to crash the market at any time now. Yeah, I mean, it's like, I, I, I can't imagine playing at his level. And it, it like to me like me as a as a, as a player as a person, mm. I always I, I kind of think of probably like man it's like it's almost it's almost mythical man. You know what I mean? It's kind of like a man. It's like that's, that's a market hero I mean, right there. <laughs> his his concern is like not how many accounts he can manage. He his concern is like how many accounts my computer can manage. Because he was saying, I don't have enough RAM to run enough clients for what I want to do. It's Holy just that <laughs> that's ridiculous. That's pretty crazy. Uh, but going back to the excavator mining drones, they are, they are like hitting that you know below the crest right here, you know as far as this ninety day view is concerned. Um, the median, as far as the median day price as labeled in the graph, is below the actual five day moving average line. So I imagine this, pro as far as the graph is concerned, uh, it's probably it's probably got some room to get lower. I yeah, I think it does, especially since the um, the LP market for Concord isn't that great. So there's nothing holding up the Concord LP market except for drones right now. That's the only thing that's keeping it up. 
because everything on the market is way, way below the rate you would sell drones at, like by an order of magnitude of 50%. It's like 50% difference between cashing out in drones and cashing out in anything else in the market. So the blueprint has like no floor right now. It can go down as far as it wants. I mean, it can go down like a lot, not as far as it wants, obviously, but it can go down easily 50%. Um, uh, with the amount of SQ unit for the blueprint, it's like the, that mean the price of the blueprint would go down 20%, something like that. Mm. If the LP goes out 50%. Um, and then the components are going down, so I would rather buy the components and... I played the components for a little while, like I think uh, about two months ago, and uh, I actually made a good amount of money on that. On oh yeah, that's, that's that's what drove my insane profits when I did my first round. Oh really? Oh cool. Drone components. That's, that's the only reason I did over 15% some weeks. Oh shit. Yeah, that's doable, though. Bucks, yeah, it, hits, it, like, it was with like 100, 100 billion, so it's like 15% of 100 billion is like 15 billion weeks. It's, it makes no sense, but it happened, so I just took it. Yeah, why not? <laughs> it's like, oh, I want to, I'm curious to see how much I made on the Elite Drone AS now. Yeah. Oh, cool. Curious. Let's, let's wait for the next CSM leak. Uh, you know what? Uh, we'll see, man. I'm just curious to see how that interaction is going to go between Rorqual, Excavated Mining Drones, and Moon Materials. Yeah, I'm very curious about that, yeah. Uh, Aquilo asks, uh, do you guys use mogul portfolios to track trends? I used to when I was mm -hmm. bigger into Tech3 markets. I'm not using it currently. I should, though. I really should. Yeah, I haven't played with it yet. That's actually a good idea. Yeah, so I surprisingly... That. I did that for uh, components and uh, subsystems. Oh, that's a good point, actually. Yeah. So surprisingly, I did join as my number four. I'm gonna leak some interesting info if you actually, if yes. actually anyone here is interested about trading. But it's number four at about six billion. Then above that, this rattlesnake's also at six billion. Uh, then geckos at six point five. And then the first one is the PFMC types uh, in Von Fields, which are at 8.5 billion total profit. Wow. Huge. Just in those five times, it's like, I mean, so it's basically TLDR is if you want to trade, you don't even need to trade more any items. You just have, you can just be lazy to one item. And yeah. Like after, after, I think it tracks, it's been tracking since uh, one, two, three, four, five, six months. If you need passive this camera, you can do that. Just a bit one order, make money. True, like uh, during, it's not World, a match. during World War B, like easily, easily thirty percent of my inv investment materials were actually going into materials and plex. Mm -hmm. Materials yep. and plex, materials and plex. For I did that for I mean, like, if you find, like if three you months. Something. Literally, mm -hmm. that's all I did for three was materials and plex. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you find something and you know you actually track the price and you know how much it's worth, then you can make a bank out of it. That's... Yeah, that's true. It's just knowing the product. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, all right. So one of the things we're going to be looking at, uh, we talked about Plex, we talked about Mind Drones, we talked about the mats, geckos. I have such a oh, love-hate relationship geckos. with geckos. My favorite. They are my favorite. I'm so afraid to play it right now. <laughs> right? I mean, okay, now, the thing is that they could get nerfed, but now that they're not in carriers anymore, it's, is there really a motive to get them nerfed or whatever? I'm not sure. I mean, the worst thing that could happen is CCP releases another round of them somehow. But even then, they haven't done that in the past either, so... I mean, yes, there is a risk, of course, but... Yeah, I mean, uh, it is it is displaying um, buy signals because it's below average. But can it get lower from this point? Uh, it's a toss up. I think if we can get it like in the realm of seventy four to seventy. How much is it right now? Like the best buy order. Right now, best buy order is seventy six in perimeter. That's a bit high. I think. I think you can six. That's super low. I mean, I have. I mean, okay. That's that's like a low from like this from like last month. But yeah, yeah. As for the graph, six. man, it it, it, it kind of bottomed out. 
Okay, so there's, there's actually one thing. There was someone selling a 500 stack lately, earlier this week. Maybe they sold a second, like probably a thousand this week. So that may have contributed to the price. So maybe someone is trying to cashing out. That's possible. That's a lot to um, catch out. Oh, a thousand geckos? Yeah, sure. That's that's a lot. Because <laughs> that's fine. Like, um, like, that's a lot of geckos. But someone did. Like like three, that well, it probably sits, what, like three to four hundred units volume daily? But now the question is that um, if it's just someone who has selling their stack, I think it's going to recover. Um, if not, we'll, we'll see. But they, they haven't got worse. They haven't I mean, got we, reproduced. I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated that we even are still playing geckos when you can't even get these. Hmm. You know what I mean? They're, they're, it's just, it's a limited supply, <laughs> a, yep. a literal limited supply, finite supply. Yeah, I guess I but some people have fun with eighty frigates as well. It's like it's how it is. It's the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. It's the game. I mean, uh, I actually put in buy orders for this, but it didn't match. So I'm like, yeah. in a way, uh, I, I put in for seventy. I put it for 73, I think, but it didn't get matched. So I'm, I shot too low. But if you're interested, it is it is displaying, you know, uh, buy indicators. I think, and if if you happen to get it, I think say 74 to 76, I think it's pretty mm -hmm. pretty reasonable to catch this like 84, 84, mm -hmm. sell it at 84 mil based on a 90 day graph. I think it's pretty reasonable. 80. I think I sold mine at 80 to 83, maybe not 84, but it's like, it's, it's the same ballpark. Yeah. It, yeah. It's probably going to go quickly enough to 82 that you can wait a bit longer, but... Yeah, that's true. And if you're buying them and you can actually you have the skills to use them properly, you'll probably make up the value of them anyway by actually riding with these things. Oh yeah, sure. That's, that's for sure. Alright, uh, another item. Uh, Pith, a type small shield booster. I used to play this a lot too. Only two dead space items that actually I got really familiar with is the small shield booster and the small armor rubber. The Pith A type right now is uh, it's it's been sitting on this consult low consolidation point, but it looks like it's about to actually cross over. So if you can capture this at like uh, right now, it's eight sixty five. You're sitting at a 11% uh, margin before taxes. It's not bad for... That is quite nice for an item like that, uh, that volume. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. You have to be kind of fast though when... It doesn't stay long at these... Um, at these margins. It, it collapses onto itself pretty quickly. Considering the volume in play. Mm-hmm. It has to get back to 5% quite quickly anyways, so... Yeah. I've only gotten burned by these just a handful of times. For the most part, definitely more wins than losses on this item. Oh, alright. So, uh... uh That's item... possible with this space, yeah. Yeah. Uh, next item is the social adaptation chip improved. Uh, we talked about the plus fives earlier in the show, uh, so that's, that's definitely a, a buy. Uh, melted nano ribbons. So right now it's technically below average. It's hitting this uh, this trade channel between like one point three mil and one point five. That's not bad. If you look at the orders right now, oh, it got cleared. There was this one order in perimeter. The, the highest buy order in perimeter and the lowest sell order Jita was literally just one isk apart. People oh, was, right. it just, it, it's one of those like trying to filter the, the sales and like, ah, <laughs> come on, come on, what are you doing? It said it's so high too, 1427. This, the, the, the lowest sell right now is 1529. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems, seems kind of high to, to be doing that kind of tactic. 
All right, so those are all our buys, guys. Uh, not a whole lot, but the ones that... Uh, and it's mostly because a lot of the buys that we called out from last week are actually still viable this week. And for our sells... Uh, the Genulutions look really good for sells this week. Oh, they've been pretty high lately as well. They, uh, they've been quite crazy, actually. Uh, the Genulution, actually, from CA2s onwards, sorry. I haven't bought them for two weeks because they were so high, I think. Yeah, Something CA, like that. CA2, CA2s is, it looks like it's falling off the crest already. Um, yeah, I created this list like two days ago, so. <laughs> all right, all right. CA2s, uh, retreating from, like, almost, like, the second, second highest of, uh, sell values in the last 90 days. It's got some, it always tripped me out why there's such these large outliers in the Jane Illusions. So it's, it sounds, it feels so RMT to me. <laughs> uh, same thing with the genuine, the CA3s. The CA3 is really interesting because the median price is actually way above the uh, five day average. Mm. Like it still got some room to go up. But if it does, that's uh, definitely breaking the 90 day uh, high history. So that's pretty interesting. And CA four is just bare, it's same thing. Uh, cracking it. Um, I can't remember in recent history that where all the genulutions actually went, all went up at the same time. That's kind of kind of it's kind of curious. Mm -hmm. Not sure why that would like if there's a performance reason for that. But in general, it's interesting because faxes basically. They're just good on faxes. Oh, these and people faxes. use faxes now. Yeah. Because um, now actually you use faxes for Macaros as well, which is going to go together well with your next sell, which is. Yeah. Well, I mean, it makes sense because you use Macaros and faxes now. It's it's just a meta, apparently. Apparently. Yeah, because the last item we actually have for sales is Macaros. Mm -hmm. I failed to get, to actually get these, man. I, I, I just, I'm just not competitive enough in the pricing. It was literal, uh, like, ISK wars the last two days. Oh, okay. 10 reasons probably, yeah. Fuck that makes sense. Wars, man. So, above average, and it's, it's, just, it's just going through its waves, man. Mm-hmm. Going through its waves. Um, so the, in the last ninety days, it's been able to to crack the three hundred sixty mark pretty comfortably. I haven't bought them for like until they went above. I didn't buy about three fifteen. I kind of regret it now, but I'm still having trouble seeing them like go even further than that. So yeah, it's probably a good sell now. Yeah, I was trying to get them at 20 a few days ago. But yeah, I they're not being in. lost in mass right now. They're, they're not so. being lost in masses. They're not that many lost right now. Um, there's been a few big fights with Macaros that a lot of them have been lost. But now it's a bit more quiet. Um, it's not items though, I imagine, you know, like, like big caches of these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, at least the blueprints, of course. Um, mm. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this one. I mean, for sure, sell at that price, but I don't know where it's gonna go from there. Yeah, I feel uh, I kind of stopped purposely playing them because I kept getting burnt on them. Uh, but during World War B, this was my, this was my money maker, man. Macario, buying and selling Macarios was my money maker mm -hmm. for sure. All right, well, I think that's really all the items that we have here. The ones that I could find at least. Do you have anything as far as to, to add to the buys and sells for the week that you're really willing to share, man? Um, mm, mm. Well, I haven't had many things uh, on the cooker right now. Um, definitely sell my carrots for sure. Uh, now LP is actually correcting, so it would be a good time to target buys at for implants at around 570 per LP. 
for all of the plus three to plus five because they're bound to drop. They're, they're a bit too high right now. It's the only items that are above the others and they're going to correct quite quickly. So people are going to dump the LP. Yeah. You can get a lot of, of them at uh, 570 on the buyer side and sell them where the margin is still high and hasn't corrected uh, along with the buy order side. Um, that's what I'm going to be up to actually the, the next few days at least. Just buying LTP, LP items because um, while it's still dropping on the buy side and catching the drop like at the reasonable price point, which is 570 for me, and then reselling while the price on the sell order still hasn't fallen down compared to the buy orders. This is probably a few days of that ahead of us, I think. Okay. Do you play with minerals at all? I don't like playing with minerals because, I mean, you, you've seen the rock nerf, right? You've seen the nerf of the rock oil. Like, you get that kind of stuff happening all the time. time. I don't want to play with minerals when that happens. No. It's that simple. No. I'm afraid to play minerals, man. Like, it, like, if you nudge that thing, the whole thing might collapse on you. <laughs> that's that's, that's <laughs> exactly. how I feel. Like, you're like, it's, it, it feels so, it seems so fragile, you know what I mean? But Actually, I played with something interesting. I played with compressed ore recently, and I'm actually quite surprised at the results. I didn't think anyone would buy them from sell orders, but apparently they do. What? It's about what? twice or three times as few as other items compared to, to other items that are similar in price and volume, but it's still a good item to trade really if you, because thing. so few people trade it that it's interesting, basically. Huh. Um, chain stop finds as minerals pretty much need to buy when CCP announces big changes. I would mm -hmm. dare say you have to get them before the announcement happens. The announcement hits. It's kind of it's kind of like a fundamental. It's kind of like fundamental analysis in uh, in real life stocks. When, at least from from the ones that I've seen, right? Mm -hmm. Like a great example I can give you in right now in recent history, Zydrine. Mm -hmm. The Z the Zydrine madness, right? Mm -hmm. When something gets announced and you look at the actual price movements, oftentimes you'll actually see price movements happen before an announcement. Mm -hmm. It also is saying like uh, buy the rumor and sell the news. That's yeah. in, in structuring. Um, Sometimes being in the right circles just pays off. Mm -hmm. You know, whoever, whoever so we have to get in the CSM things. now. Is that it? <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest. I mean. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> was was that really a CSM lead? I don't know. And mm. personally, as a trader, I don't care. Uh, so the thing I, is, that's just a murder idea anyway. So they can't, they couldn't tell us what they knew anyway. It's like I would speculate, but we don't even know what they knew. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, I just speculate on that. I mean, well, it's really speculation when there's when there's already an established patterned nerf on the roar calls and excavator mining drones every ninety days. I mean, nor the roar call. I'm not even surprised now. It's it's fine. I'm not even surprised by the flex itself, either. Though. It's flex was bound to go up. There was a sale like right before. Was it one month before this split or something? Like that? Not that long before. So it was going to correct at first and then correct some and like keep going up as. It gets more interesting for because of the smaller size. Um, I mean, some people say it was like arranged or whatever, but I mean, Plex was bound to go up anyway, yeah, if I mean, anything. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm terrible at even like logicing my way through speculation. That's why I just do technical analysis. Like, mm -hmm. show me buy and sell prices, then I'll show you patterns. You know, that's that's kind of that relationship I have with <laughs> with the interface. I'm not. I'm just not in tune with like you know the Nolsec industry, Nolsec gathering, and you know kind of the social market meta behind that behind that machine. You know, it's just not, I, I don't know it. I mean, I like I like being a bit in fights to kind of see. I like to understand why my trading is working the way it does. So I I don't understand everything, but I understand like the part that has to do with no and low sec pvp which is makes me very happy and now i have to actually understand what's going on with uh t3 and uh t2 production now which is uh, something i have to actually uh, get into later on yeah yeah true all right i think we're coming up in uh in, wow an hour and 45 minutes holy crap all right great didn't even seem that we were talking that long <laughs> that's the uh... 
I'm not sure if that's on time, but I like that sounded pretty good so far. Yeah, 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 great, great. Well, uh, we'll probably shut it here so I can, I, I do try to get this out to the YouTube part of, as soon as the same night, I try to at least. Um, for those of you guys who, just for just, just for uh, better access, of course we have these VODs in uh, Event T, and I put it in my YouTube channel. Um, and um, I should probably replicate that same process in my own personal channel because I actually do want to add my own streams along with like these types of streams. Like, uh, I kind of want to start streaming myself like doing like low six shit. <laughs> I have my trader tune doing PvP or whatever. <laughs> uh, I don't know if there's gonna be demand for that, but I'd like I'd, I'd probably do some test runs for that. Um, do you have any uh, last words, any shoutouts, anything else before we close with Trump? Well, I just want to say thank you for uh, your invitation, fine for having me on, and of course thank you again for uh, getting me started with the uncollateralized loan stuff because I think it's uh, you were the first to offer like five billion and uncollateralized, and that kind of get me started to where I am now. So it's like. <laughs> it's kind of crazy to think about it now, but do yeah, I mean, you I totally mean, surpassed me. You know, and that, that, I find that it's, it's that's offer, awesome. I would have started the, the the loans, and I wouldn't have got the amount I got, and it's like it's kind of crazy, but you got the ball rolling. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, if anyone out there is interested in kind of that part of the markets, you know, like beyond Jita four four dot. You know, there's a whole <laughs> wide world out there. There's there's a lot of room for creativity, uh, but you got places like the SEC Lounge. You got places like uh, Eve Mogul Discord. You got places like Eve Prosper Discord. Uh, to be honest, there's a lot of market types in uh, Talking in Stations Discord as well. Right, um, and I definitely would like to recommend if you're more into the actual investing in people part. Uh, my Discord, uh, Rodin's Investment Group, uh, it's open to everyone. It's because uh, we get we can get people in the general chat. Then for the folks who are actually interested in doing the operations or um, investing money in people, uh, there's a separate section for there. So, all right, um, that's really all I got. Thanks again, uh, Anathema. Really appreciate it. Uh, and hopefully this, this will uh, start us off. If anyone out there is interested in actually joining us here, uh, you're more than welcome to. Uh, it definitely gives it a different flavor when people are talking about markets, uh, kind of like, kind of like in, a, in the same way you would just be sitting like in your, you know, in your corp Discord or whatever, <laughs> you know, just, or SCC yep. if we actually did voice, you know, sometimes we do. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, guys. I'll definitely, hopefully, within before I go to bed for sure, I'll actually have this in uh, YouTube and I'll link that out to everyone. So, thanks again, guys. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, I'm close up the stream right now.